Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a while, but let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, check if a string contains all binary codes of size k. We're given a binary string s, binary meaning that it's just made up of zeros and ones. We're given an integer k, for example, two, and we wanna return true if every single binary code of length two in this case is a substring of s. Well, what is a binary code? Well, pretty much a string made up of zeros and ones. So how many possible binary codes can we make with two digits. Well, if you studied CS, you know that this is just basically a truth table. So basically we're gonna go through uh, every single combination. So we can do zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. So in this case, we have two digits. There's two possibilities for the value that could go here. There's two possibilities for the value that could go there. So in total, there's gonna be four different codes that we can create with two digits. Now, if we had three digits, this would just be two times that. So then we'd have eight codes that we can make with three digits. Thinking about it like this way is really helpful to analyze the time complexity, but it's also helpful to arrive at a solution in my opinion. So a naive way that we could solve this problem is take every single code that we can create and then check every single substring of S with this code until we find it. Now, luckily we find it right at the beginning, zero, zero. So, okay, we know that this already exists in S. Let's look for the other three codes. Do they also exist in S? If they do, we can return true. If they don't, we return false. The only problem with this approach is, first of all, how many codes do we have? Well, it's gonna be two to the power of K. Remember, that's how we were doing our two times two times two, uh, and then we keep doing that where K is the number of digits. And then for every single code, we have to check every single substring in S. The worst case, that is going to be roughly the size of S. Let's call that N for now. So two to the K times N. So N is the number of positions we're gonna have to look at in S. Now, the size of the substring is going to be K, so we could also add another K here, but the idea is that this is not super efficient. The good thing is that we can actually get rid of this. How about instead of creating every single possible code and then brute forcing that, how about we just go through our string S, get every single substring of size two, and then just basically count how many unique substrings of size two are there. What if there's only one unique substring of size two? Then we know for sure we haven't found the solution because we were looking for exactly four unique substrings of size two. But in this case, we're gonna find zero zeros at the beginning, one one is there, we also have a zero one over here, and we also have a one zero over there, and then the rest are just gonna be duplicates. We did find exactly four, and that's the number that we were looking for. And what that number is, is going to be two to the power of k, just like we talked about earlier. So in this case, the time complexity is actually gonna be improved because we're going to only have to go through the string S one time. We are gonna to have to do that sliding window technique where we're just looking at every window of size two or whatever K happens to be. But overall, the time complexity of that is just gonna be N times K. Now, how are we gonna uniquely count these? Well, the easiest way would be to use a hash set. So the memory complexity is also gonna be roughly n times k. But another way to bound the memory complexity would be also just to say it's two to the power of k because we can't really have any more unique strings than that. And that's all we're going to be adding to the hash map anyway. Okay, with that said, now let's jump into the code. It's pretty easy. While figuring out the solution might be easy, the good thing is that writing the code is pretty easy once you've done that. So the first thing we're gonna do is create that hash set. I'm gonna call it our, our code set, basically counting the unique codes of size K that we have in our string S. So I'm just going to first iterate through every single beginning position in our string. But I wanna make sure that starting at i, we can create a substring of size k from this position, meaning that there's at least k minus one characters that come after this position. Uh, we can do that in Python by going up until the end of the string minus k plus one. And then for every single position, we're going to, to our hash set, take the substring starting at index i, going up until i plus k, where k is non-inclusive, so this substring will be size k. 
starting at i, and then we're gonna take this and add it to our hash set. Now, if it already exists in our hash set, this won't do anything, but if it doesn't exist in the hash set, this will add it to the hash set. So then after we've done that, we know we can return true if and only if the length of this code set, the number of codes that we were able to add unique codes is exactly equal to two to the power of k. This is how you can do that in Python by this operator. But if this is the case, we can return true. If it's not the case, then we return false. So let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thank you so much for watching.